Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Colin aka Riverman and I'm here to talk about big smallmouth baits. So my first question for you guys today is what would you throw to catch a big smallmouth? That is a football. That's a freaking chunk. Oh my god. <laughs> So in today's video, I'm gonna go over five baits that historically have produced big smallmouth. And I'm actually focusing on the five baits that I caught my biggest smallmouth on this year, this past season. So it's winter outside right now. I can't get out to fish, so I'm making these videos to try to get some information out there. Um, and just know that this is geared towards river smallmouth, but also applies to lake smallmouth as well. All right, so the first bait that you need to be throwing to catch big smallmouth, and specifically river smallmouth, is a buzz bait. Now, a buzz bait doesn't seem to be as widely used in the river for smallmouth, or at least in my experience, I don't see it being thrown as often. Um, some of the local rivers I've fished around here, literally I've only ever seen one other person throwing a buzz bait. Um, and I think it's a good alternative to baits that are thrown a lot more often, like a whopper plopper. So on that note, like a whopper plopper, it does have similar action with the uh, propeller spinning here. Um, but it provides a subsurface presentation, and that's what I like about it the most. It's not truly top water, it's actually sitting just below the surface where the smallmouth are able to get a nice view of that bait. Also, you'll notice on this setup, um, I don't throw a skirt. Actually, the first thing I do when I buy a buzz bait is take the skirt off, no matter how high quality it is, and I replace it with a swim bait of some sort. And that swim bait should obviously match the color or the style of bait that you're fishing around. Um, but I think it gives it a lot more natural presentation, especially being that subsurface. For a smallmouth to see a minnow that's above them, but below the surface, to me, it seems like they see that as an easy catch. And so they come up and just smack it. Another thing I really like about a buzz bait is that it works well around different cover types that other baits would get hung up in. So if we're talking about top water with the whopper plopper, obviously if we throw that into a lay down, you have a pretty high chance of snagging that wood with the treble hooks. That's not the case with the buzz bait because of the single hook and it's sitting on top. Um, you can typically throw this around grass, wood, rock, whatever it is, and you're not uh, in danger of getting hung up. Now, obviously if you don't make a great cast, you're going to, but the single hook being on the upper side coming across it just allows that bait to pull fish out of those dense cover areas without actually having to get down in there and that's one reason why I really like this bait so on the topic of a single hook um, it does mean you're probably gonna get uh, fewer hookups meaning that fish have a tendency to short strike if they're not in the mood so they might get the back of the buzz bait or they might get the back of the swim bait and they might just completely miss the hook especially if it's a pretty decent size um, so that does happen but the benefit of that single hook is that when a fish is on um, you rarely have them come off like a fish hooked well um, top of the mouth with this this isn't going to come off um, for no reason something really has to go wrong and so a buzz bait in that regard is pretty strong just lastly, overall, for some reason, topwater lures and a buzz bait especially are just big fish baits. It just pulls out bigger fish, and I'm not sure why that is. Topwater, in my opinion, tends to do that. It, you might not get those number days, but you're definitely going to have some quality days if a top topwater bite is on, especially at certain times of the year. And don't be afraid to throw topwater early, especially a subsurface bait. Remember, right? It's not actually 100% true topwater. It's not like a walking bait sitting on the literal surface of the water. And one more note is that this bait is not to be overlooked for largemouth either. Um, one of the biggest tournaments I've ever fished, uh, I believe it was 2020 in the KBF Challenge Series Championship down at Lake Gunnersville. I caught a majority of my limit fish on a buzz bait. I caught, you know, one solid four or five pounder on the second day that really put me where I needed to be. And right after that, I literally lost what had to have been a 25 inch bass, the biggest fish of my life, pulled me down into a hydrilla patch after eating the buzz bait. My drag was set way wrong, pulled me down, broke me off. But I ended up getting 14th out of 200 something anglers at that tournament. And in large part, that was due to fishing a buzz bait around grass. So yeah, buzz bait, tie it on. Throw it this year. So number two on the list is going to be a dark sleeper made by Mega Bass. And if you don't know about the dark sleeper uh, for smallmouth, then I really don't know where you've been in the fishing world for the past couple years. But if you don't, that's all right. That's what I'm trying to preach is that this bait is great for smallies. Now it's a goby imitation, um, but you don't need to necessarily have gobies as a forage. But it's definitely a bonus if you have sculpin 
or gobies in a river uh, because the smallmouth are simply gonna seek this out and eat it up just about every time. It is a great bait. So as you can tell, it's just a swim bait. It's got a simple, subtle action. It stays down. You're supposed to fish it down towards the bottom, not the middle of the water column. Uh, the tail is not super aggressive. It's subtle, and I like to use it to clean up fish. And what I mean by clean up fish is that when I run something through there that's a little faster, maybe a crankbait or something, I'll come back with it afterwards, after catching a few with the dark sleeper, and I can still usually produce a bite or two. So this is one of my favorites for hard bottom situations. Um, and when you're fishing the hard bottom, you can work it a lot of ways. You can pop it, you can slow crank it, um, you can work it like a jig. It's got a lot of different options, but at the end of the day, I think the thing that really sets it apart is its subtlety and really its size. It's not a big bait, um, but it's that perfect, uh, that perfect size of uh, a bait fish, a goby, a sculpin, something like that. So I also think one thing about the dark sleeper is that it's overlooked at certain times of the year so number one specifically for the spawn um, everybody knows that smallmouth hate goies and smallmouth hate goies especially in the spawn so for example here on lake michigan and chicago um, a lot of people are throwing a, a wide variety of baits for the spawn right for fish on bed so whether you agree with that or disagree with it is not the question um, but what i think the dark sleeper can really do is help you catch a really pressured fish and i've done really well on this small, tiny dark sleeper. And this is after fish have seen a lot of baits thrown at them, uh, after they've seen different presentations that I've made. I've gotten really good bites with this tiny little dark sleeper um, for fish on the bed. One, because I think it's natural. Um, and two, it's size, it's a little different. It doesn't have a whole lot of action. It's not bright. Um, and fish just hate it, honestly. Smallmouth hate gobies. They crush them, they smash them, and, uh, and that's, <laughs> Um, and that's no different with this bait when you throw it on a small mouth bed. All right, so number three on the list is gonna be one that we've already mentioned, and that's the Whopper Plopper. I just don't know what it is about this bait, but one, it's super fun, but two, it draws quality fish strikes um, from many different species. So I've caught my biggest smallmouth bass on this, I've caught my biggest pike on this, I've caught my biggest muskie on a Whopper Plopper with an even bigger one that I've missed, so this bait, I don't know what it is. I say it pisses fish off, um, but it does simply just catch fish. It is unbelievable. Um, even in some pressured situations where multiple people throw this a lot throughout the year, you're still gonna get fish to bite it. And on that note, if there are lots of people throwing this uh, throughout the year, but especially in the summertime, don't be afraid to throw the plopper early in the year. I'm talking April, even late March sometimes. I've had great days on the river throwing the Whopper Plopper 75 when a lot of people would say it's way too cold and I've caught some of my biggest smallmouth um, from certain rivers or had them bite and get off, you know, et cetera, et cetera. In any case, the Whopper Plopper drew strikes from quality fish at certain times of the year where people don't really want to use it for some reason and I think that comes down to thinking that water temperature and what month it is should dictate all the time what bait you're throwing. but. Um, Break with what you're thinking sometime this year and throw the Whopper Plopper in some cooler water. You might not have quantity days, but I guarantee you will pull a quality bite. Another benefit of the Plopper, and if you've ever had one, you already know this, is that the hooks are super sharp. If you just look at these hooks wrong, um, they're already in your shirt, your pants, your skin, your car, whatever it may be. So obviously it's a dual treble hook setup. So when a fish comes up and smacks this, they, even if they don't get it in the mouth, usually a hook will get them more in the neck. Um, and so the hookup ratio is great. Now treble hooks, you seem to have a lot more, um, well, a higher possibility of losing the fish once it's already on because it just shakes off one of these or it wasn't hooked very well. Um, and that's the case with any treble hook bait, but these things are so sharp that they definitely make up for it. So really to sum up the Whopper Plopper, it just plain works. I'm really not 100% sure why. Um, and again, I encourage you to throw it at different times of the year, maybe a little earlier than you normally would, a little later than you normally would, to generate some really quality bites on the river for smallmouth bass. And number four on the list that I really have come to like this year is the DT series crankbait, specifically the DT10. And this is where we're getting into more lake smallmouth or a deeper river. 
um, but this bait has a really nice tight wobble and that means it typically does well at those colder transitional periods of the year so spring into summer and then summer into fall or fall into winter uh, that tight wobble something about it Somalis like it and this is actually one of my favorite colors uh, for smallmouth in clear water situations um, and it has this orange down at the bottom and kind of a greenish silvery top Something about this color smallmouth really like. I think it's called root beer crawl or something similar to that, but it is one of my favorites both in clear and dirty water. For some reason that orange smallies really like. So one of the situations that I really like throwing this bait in is when the fish don't want to feed on the bottom, they don't want to feed on the top, they're in the middle of the water column. Fishing a DT10 over 20 feet of water, even though it's only getting down to 10, 12 feet, depending on what line you're using, um, it tends to be a money range, especially in clearer water. Fish will come up to grab it. Um, I've had good success on Lake Michigan with this, fishing in the middle of the water column when a dark sleeper on the bottom isn't working, something faster up towards the top isn't working, and the fish just want something in the middle of the water column i'm guessing because the bait is schooled up and that's what they've been following around these times of year um, but it just does work well in that scenario i do like it there and lastly in addition to a really good color selection for some reason the dt10 even when you're banging it off the bottom it doesn't seem to hang up uh, as badly as some other crankbaits that could be because of the rounded lip here and the tighter wobble but i've had really good success you know taking it through really rocky stuff without getting hung in there and even when I do get snagged I'm able to actually you know jerk it out without breaking it off I haven't lost a ton of these and that's one other reason that I really like this bait for big smallmouth bass number five on the list is gonna be a jig now I'm gonna talk about two different styles of jig I'm gonna first talk about a swim jig and then I'm gonna go to a football head jig so firstly a swim jig. This is a jig that you swim through the water column. It's often paired up with a little swim bait. I like um, the shorter swim baits actually. I actually like smaller swim jigs in general with a shorter swim bait, like a, a three inch raid swimmer uh, from Strike King. There's something about this bait that produces quality and quantity. The size, especially if you're throwing a smaller swim jig, the size draws a lot of fish in. Um, but I've caught some of my biggest smallmouth as well on a swim jig in the finesse size. Um, I, don't, I think it might be just a different profile that they're not used to seeing. Um, a little smaller bait, but something that looks really natural, especially in the summer and certain times of the year where the bait is actually smaller. Um, so yeah, this is actually a Dirty Jigs Finesse Swim Jig, and this is one of my favorites. And I don't know if you all can see this, but the bottom is just completely beat up. And that is because you can fish this jig around a lot of heavy cover and really not have too many issues with it. You can swim it through wood, you can bounce it off rocks. And that's another reason that I really like this bait is its versatility. You can fish it on the bottom, slow like a jig, even if it is a swim jig. Um, you can swim it through grass, come through super clean. You can swim it through laydowns um, and draw those fish up from those tiny little nooks and crannies where they're hiding, come up and swallow it and you can jerk it out of there. A certain time of the year that I really like throwing a swim jig is during the pre-spawn when especially river smallmouth are gonna be in those current seam areas. You can see the current seam coming down the river and that can be your guide for where you should cast. Cast it right in there, swim it down the seam and those smallmouth that are hanging out somewhere in that area will come up and just smack it kind of like a reaction bait um, they will chase it they will follow so the pre-spawn definitely think about tying on a swim jig um, if they're not biting things like spinner bait that are a little to throw out a little more light and are a little more aggressive in terms of their vibration because this you know subtle move uh, can really produce some quality bites even if you're throwing a smaller bait overall so of course last but not least as i said a football jig and a football jig has that nice football shape. And this is something that's honestly gonna work all year long. It's gonna work cold water, warm water. Um, it's preferable to fish a football head jig on the hard rocky bottom, and that's where I have the most success with it. But that's not always the case. You can fish it on some softer areas. If the small mouth are there, they will come after it because it does kick up a lot of mud behind it. So this is one bait that is great for small mouth and large mouth all year round again you may not get the quantities on a football jig but there's something about it i've caught some of my biggest fish largemouth and smallmouth on a football jig well you guys that is it for my top five baits for big smallmouth and this was all based on last season 2021 uh these all produced big fish for me i'm not making them up some things 
I obviously can't explain. Some of, well, all of the five that I've presented, I think are truly big fish baits that if you throw them at certain times of the year or even all year, are gonna produce those quality bites for you when you're on the river looking for smallmouth bass. Obviously something that I really love to do. So I hope to show more of you um, that this coming season and I plan on making more videos once uh, the ice goes away, once the snow goes away. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you did like the video, like, subscribe. If you don't, no big deal, cause I'm going fishing anyway. So I'll see you guys out on the river, hopefully soon. Oh, look at that thing, dude. That is thick. Oh my gosh.